Hi, this is Lynn, and welcome to another Persuasion Bite, bite-sized tips on persuasion that you can use right away. It's one of my favorite cartoons. It's two older gentlemen in suits sitting in overstuffed chairs in some kind of paneled club. One of them is speaking to the other, and the caption reads, Winthrop, are there ever days when you don't feel a cut above the rest? And the truth is, as leaders, Research shows that 70% of us, regardless of our sex, experience imposter syndrome at some point. This is where we believe that we've lucked into this situation, we're really unprepared or unqualified, and if everyone else knew how much we were unqualified, they would call us out as frauds. Since it's so common, let's take a closer look at what's going on here. It helps to know that there are two types of self-confidence. The first is called general self-confidence. This is formed when we're very young, and it's based on the feedback that we get from people around us about how competent and how skilled we are and how well we handle things, plus our own opinions and judgments. This kind of self-confidence is pretty stable throughout the course of our lives. And the more general self-confidence we have, the more confident we feel when we're facing new environments and new situations and roles. The second type of self-confidence we have is task-specific self-confidence. And this relates to how well we've done a specific activity at a specific time, how prepared we feel when this is in front of us. And obviously, this raises and lowers itself based upon our situational success. When we successfully complete a task, hey, our confidence grows. When things don't go as well as we want, then our confidence wanes. And this comes into play when we're facing recurrent or familiar problems or challenges. Now that we know this, let's take a look at three tactics you can use when you're feeling imposter syndrome for one reason or another because we experience them in both of these types of self-confidences. So, for example, general self-confidence challenge could be when you take on your new role as CEO. It's a new situation and it draws on your general self-confidence. Or when you're giving your first board presentation as a leader of the company. And this is task-specific self-confidence. The first of the three things that we can do is notice our feelings and what's going on in our body. Because a lot of times we plow through things and we get stuck in the swirl. But if you ask yourself, how am I feeling? And your answer is, I feel anxious or I feel fearful. Then you can identify, oh, because I don't think I can handle this. That's imposter syndrome. Or it could be that you're feeling that gut churn or you're feeling stress in your shoulders or necks and you ask yourself, what's going on here? I don't think I'm going to be successful with this. Then we can identify it is imposter syndrome. Dr. Dan Siegel has a good line that's useful for us. He calls it, name it to tame it. Once I know I'm afraid because I think everybody's going to figure out that I'm a fraud, then I'm not spending a lot of energy trying to convince myself that's not what's going on. I can just admit it and deal with it. So when you're feeling that imposter syndrome, notice how it shows up in your emotions and in your body, which means that the next time you experience these things, you can quickly identify, oh, it's imposter syndrome. Now I know what to do about that. Which takes us to the second tactic you can use, which is remind yourself of similar situations you've handled well in the past. So we're talking about general self-confidence. Remind yourself as the new CEO that, hey, I've been promoted to higher levels of responsibility or I've joined an organization in a new higher position than I've had before. What did I do to be successful then? 
And the corollary, what did I do last time that didn't work out so well and that I should avoid now? Which reminds you, you have capabilities. You're not an imposter. Or if we're talking about task-specific self-confidence and you're going to present to the board, remind yourself of the last time you gave a really good presentation to any group. And what did you do there that worked out well? And what will you avoid because you know better now? Look into your history. Pull out successful examples. Remind yourself you've been there before. And the third tactic you can use is visualization. Research shows that 90% of Olympic athletes and plenty of other athletes visualize a successful performance long before they end up in a competition. Here's why it works. Our brains cannot tell the difference between something we imagine and something that's actually happening. So, as the new CEO, with your general self-confidence, if you visualize exactly how it's going to look, how you are going to look as a leader, the types of decisions you're going to make, the types of relationships you're going to build, you're laying down that new wiring in your brain so it doesn't feel like you're an imposter. On a certain level, you're doing this, you're practicing it, so when you go into the real world to do these things, you already feel like you have a skill level there. And the same thing is true for task-specific self-confidence. If it's at presentation, visualize what it looks like as you give a presentation that knocks the socks off your board and gets them to say yes to you. And repeat this. Lay down this wiring so that when you actually stand up to do this, it feels as though you've already done it before and you're just creating, stepping into this reality that you've already created in your mind. When you feel like an imposter, whether it's self, general self-confidence or whether it's task-specific, do these three things. First, <laughs> remind yourself of the emotions that you're feeling and the physical Ex, you know, physical experiences that you're having so that you can identify this as imposter syndrome and then you know you have tools to handle it. Second, think about situations that are similar to the one that you're in and how you've successfully managed them and the things that you've learned there that you'll apply now. And finally, visualize how doing a great job in this situation is going to look so that you can step into that in the real world. Here's another line that's really useful. Feelings are not facts. Just because you feel like an imposter doesn't mean you are. Use these three tools and the knowledge that everybody feels this way. And you'll become the most persuasive person in the room. Thanks for watching.